So how it happens? Why it happens? Placental aberration is mainly because of hemorrhage into the decidua basalis, and which causes decidual hemorrhage, which results in separation of decidua from the basal plate, which further predisposes its separation and bleeding. Because of the separation and bleeding accumulating behind the placental bed, it causes compression and destruction of placental tissue. The exact cause why this starts, why placental separation starts is still unknown. However, it is postulated that it may be due to inherent weakness or anomaly in the spiral arterioles. The blood may dissect upwards towards the fundus, which results in a concealed hemorrhage or it trickles down towards the cervix, causing <coughs> revealed hemorrhage. As you are seeing in this chart, in this uh, flow chart, that once blood gains access into the amniotic fluid after rupture of membranes, the placental side gets disrupted, and the metabolic exchanges, which is important for fetal well-being, gets this uh, is reduced, which causes fetal hypoxia leading to fetal compromise and subsequently, if it is not tackled on time, can even lead to fetal demise. As, as the bleeding is going on, there is a continued release of tissue thromboplastin in maternal circulation, which, will lead, which can lead to DIC if it goes on for long without being checked. And we all know that in placental abruption, DIC is the most dreaded complication. In concealed hemorrhage, there is effusion of blood behind the placenta, but its margins remain adherent. The placenta is completely separated, but yet the membrane is attached to the uterine wall. After breaking through the membranes, blood access the amniotic cavity. The fetal head is closely applied to the lower uterine segment, and the blood cannot make way past it. Often, Sooner or later, the membranes gradually get dissected off the uterine wall and blood escapes from. Mostly, we see this <clears throat> covalent uterus in a concealed type of uh, um, abruptio where there is a hematoma formation and the blood seeps into the myometrium, giving it a covalent uterus appearance. It is also called as uteroplacental apoplexy. It is called Covelaire uterus because it was first described by Covelaire in early 1900s. There, there is extravasation of blood into uterine musculature and beneath uterine, uterine serosa. This diagnosis is only made during laparotomy if we are undergoing, if we are taking the patient either for cesarean section or obstetric hysterectomy, we will see the external appearance of the uterus. The bluish spots will, the bluish spots, the blood beneath the serosa and in the uh, myometrium is visible. Often, this myometrial will cause, will not allow the myometrium to contract properly, hence leading to PPH. So, whenever a patient presents with abruptio, whether there is covalent uterus or not, we should always be prepared for the third uh, leg, we'll, we should always be prepared for postpartum hemorrhage as it is a normal sequelae that antipartum hemorrhage is followed by postpartum hemorrhage. As you can see, the bluish discoloration, which you can see even through serosa, the blood has seeped inside the full thickness of myometria. And most, mostly the contraction takes place and obstetric hysterectomy is rarely mandatory. But if the, there is on-table atony of the uterus and patient is bleeding profusely, in order to save patient's life and to control bleeding, obstetric uh, hysterectomy may be performed. So diagnosis is mainly clinical. Patient will present with painful vaginal bleeding associated with uterine tenderness, hyperactivity, and increased tone. Signs and symptoms can vary. 86% presents with vaginal bleeding, 66% presents with abdominal pain and uterine tenderness, 60% will present with fetal distress, 34% will present with uterine activity and increased uterine tone, and 15% will present with fetal demise. 
ultrasonography can only detect 20% of abruption especially if it is a revealed type the separated when the placenta gets separated blood is not getting accumulated behind uh, in the retroplacental uh, area so it, there will be nothing no sign in ultrasound to give us a diagnosis of plus abruptio hi whenever a patient presents with bleeding per vagina in the late trimester we have to do a ultrasound because we need to exclude placenta previa with placental abruption mostly placenta previa will be associated with placental abruption may be associated with placenta previa so it will help us to manage the pregnancy better sometimes patient will have chronic abruption there will be throughout their pregnancy there will be recurrent vaginal bleeding with episodic pain and contraction most in chronic abruption generally fetal compromise is seen in the form of iugr but as it is a chronic procedure a chronic process and suddenly the blood supply is not getting disrupted mostly fetus is salvaging you can see there is a huge retroplacental hemorrhage behind the placenta these two are pictures of placenta retroplacental clot in two different cases in the upper one you can see there is a very minimal clot seen which is which looks like an old retroplacental clot it can be attributed to the grade 0 type but in the lower one you see the clot is a large one it could be either grade 2 or 3